going to the Bills game. I promised I would jump through a table the second we got through a tailgate. The first thing Jalen Rose said is, who's got a table for this man to jump through? <laughs> Raining, dreary <laughs> beers going through the table. <laughs> How do you it. feel about that experience, Jacoby? I, well, I applaud you being a man of your word. Just talk talk us through that. Break that down. What do you see there? Well, let me tell you, is, is this one lady was like, Jalen, the first, we get out of the Uber, Jalen's first thing is like, who's got a table? Who's got a table? I was like, Jay, I haven't even had a drink yet. Like, I ain't even warmed up. I got to look at these different tables. But when I saw the table, not all tables are created equal. And that table had plastic framing, not metal framing. And when I saw that particular table, I was like, all right, I can do this. And there's, there are people at the Patel game who are very concerned about me. They're like, you shouldn't do this, dog. They're like, don't do this. And I was like, I thought you guys do this all the time. Why do you look so concerned? And there it was. Got up on the cooler. Oh. Jumped into the table. Yeah. And then, and then I just had to, I had to keep getting after the table. Because you can't just yeah, jump What was the second? What is this part? What is this part? You got because... to destroy the table. You got to smash the table. I don't know if you noticed that, Jalen Rose. There was also a football game there, and the Bills were dominant, uh... putting themselves back as the class of the AFC East. They were, I mean, Texas didn't even score a point. Texas didn't even score a point. Davis Mills was having trouble moving the ball, and the Bills were having no trouble whatsoever with their opponent. Big shout to Buffalo and the Bills. Shout to the Bills Mafia defense. Had a shutout. That's always impressive in an NFL game. Mm -hmm. And also it's great to see Allen and Diggs hook up. But since it was like 40 to zip and this game wasn't really exciting, let's talk about what was exciting. We didn't have tickets initially. And Mm -hmm. so we had to call Conway the Machine who was on the field catching passes from Josh Allen. Conway the Machine was on the field. He came to the gate. Big shout to Griselda. Big shout to everybody in Buffalo it's who more. took such great it's care more. of us. It's more. Big shout to Jalen Rose Saturday night? for not having tickets to the game, not having hotel rooms booked, just <laughs> we're sharing the same room. It was a true Buffalo experience. Big shout to everybody that took care of us. We have to move Yo. on to the rest of the NFL weekend, dog, Mr. Hold Rose. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, what about I'm Saturday night, dog? Far Big Ben's falling off. Because it's sort of what Big Ben used to be. Was he as athletic? Maybe not quite as athletic, but he was as big, and he was able to break tackles back there, and he was able to create second plays. The Buffalo Bills, you're calling them the class of the AFC right now. Why? Well, because of him. First and foremost, he's the best quarterback in the AFC, and he's missed some some deep down the field throws early in a couple games. But now he has a special connection with Emmanuel Sanders. The secondary is starting to pick up. They're creating turnovers, and they're going to continue to try to improve that run game. But having um, Gabriel Davis, um, Cole Beasley, having all these different weapons, it's not like even Steph- Stephon Diggs is having a you know having big big games. But when you can kind of spread the wealth, you make that offense incredibly difficult to handle. And I look at Buffalo, and with Josh extending plays, making plays, and doing the things that he's doing. I like the Buffalo Bills right now as the class, even though they've lost one. And and receiver was a weakness for them. And that's why they they went out, they made that trade, tried to bring in Stephon Diggs to become their number one wide receiver. And then another big offseason pickup that they made was Emmanuel Sanders. And you thought that he might go down there to New Orleans last season and have a huge year with Drew Brees. Didn't really pan out in that way. Now he comes to Buffalo. He's in his 30s, well into his 30s now. But he's exploding a bit. I mean, he's finding a great partnership here with Josh Allen, and it's working. I just thought Allen threw some laser beams in that game. And he he does it on the move, and he's so comfortable back there. He's standing tall like we see Tom Brady do, but he's never worried. I think it's the size factor. He's never worried that somebody's going to get a big hit on him because he's bigger than all these defensive linemen. It's like how many times do you see a quarterback that when he's moving and a lineman gets an arm on him, he just knocks it off, and he's faster, and he's able to create space to go make another throw point make a throw on the run he is as physically an imposing of a quarterback as we've seen since cam newton the difference is he can actually throw the ball too it's a scary combination (laughs) man let me tell you you name me one guy that's tough one quarterback that's tougher than him i i don't see it you tell me one quarterback physically more tougher than this guy he just He's a handful, and you talked about, you compared him to Big Ben. I played against Big Ben when Big Ben came in as a rookie, 
we kicked their butts too. picked them off 87 yards to the house I had to mention that. But when <laughs> Big Ben came in as a rookie, he was the same way chasing them around and coach Belichick would always tell us when we watch tape. Don't tackle around the ankles. Don't tackle around the thighs. Don't even tackle around the hips tackle his arms because he's always up there and he's always pushing you off. But if you go tackle his arms, he can't go anywhere. So that's one of the lessons that we had to learn <laughs> to play against Big Ben. Yeah. What else you got over there, Chris? All right, so Gary in Buffalo is on the line right now about the Bills not getting any respect. Gary, one second. The Bills are the best team in the AFC. No, I agree. <sighs> I'm sticking with the Chiefs. Oh, oh really? Oh, Yeah, I'll stick with them. All right, Rich. I got another. I'll stick with him. I'll stick with him. Because, again, who's running the football when it all comes down to it? Who cares? Right. Who cares how much, who, how many points the, the Chiefs defense is giving up I right now? I think big difference between the who Chiefs can run off- the ball excuse and me, stopping The Chiefs someone. offense is more unstoppable than the Bills offense. When the Mandalorian's playing out of his head, the Mandalorian quarterback's playing out of his head, they can really move the ball down the field. But I would put, you know, I would put Mahomes and Tyree. Who would you take, Josh Allen and Diggs or Mahomes and Hill? Oh, man. I, I mean, mean seriously. I mean, I was choosing my favorite okay, kid. Okay, who do you take? Who do you take, Mahomes and, and, and Kelsey or or uh, Allen and Dawson Knox? Look, I, Who I, do you take, Clyde Edwards-Alaire totally or, or Singletary and Moss whenever he's, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying. But the, the sum of the parts can look terrific yeah. and the defense we will see what this defense can do to the chiefs offense and let's see what happens when it when we we have to meet ball sunday night for the for the moment i'm sticking with the team that i said will repeat as a an afc championship representative in the super bowl back to back to back that's where i'm going Another stack courtesy of Trey Wingo. The Bills are the third team since 1972 with two shutouts in the first four games. The other two teams, Rich? The 91 Washington football team and the 2000 Ravens. Do you know what they have in common? They won the Super Bowl. They both won the Super Bowl. Got it. Got it. This team is rolling now. And, okay, the Texans stink, but they're still... Defensively, they're getting better and better. Boogie Basham had a sack today. Those are the kind of things that you have to get... Uh, from those those players, they drafted Russo and Basham with the idea of, you know, being deep in the playoffs and knocking down Patrick Mahomes and and whoever else is in the Tom Brady in the Super Bowl if you get that far. So you got to be able to rush the passer. They're getting better at it. They're going to be good at it by the end of the year, and we know they're going to score a lot of points with Josh Allen in that offense. And Jamie Josh Allen, depending on the format, 23 to 24 points. Dawson Knox, you had as a sleeper at the tight end position, and he found Pater a couple times. It's now three games in a row with a score. You know, and he's becoming more a part of this offense. There's so many weapons. I mean, you know, Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders, and obviously Stephon Diggs finally get going to a big level. Uh, still looking for the t- uh, you know the touchdowns on a consistent basis, but going over 100 yards, he could have had a couple fumbles in this game, but. Uh, um, I think you just look at Buffalo, and, and kudos to them for not looking ahead because they get the Chiefs next week. You know that what that game means to them. That's the team that they're trying to get over to be the Super Bowl contender that you know Pete, for example, thinks they're going to be. But this defense really has been fantastic. You know, two of the last three games they shut out their opponents, and so that is going to make things very difficult for them to beat. The Bills have rattled off three straight victories in impressive fashion over the course of the last three games. The Bills have outscored opponents. 118 to 21. A lot of teams looking impressive yesterday. But Stephen A., who is the best team in the AFC? I feel like we've been so focused on the NFC this show. Well, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at two teams. I'm gonna look at the Buffalo Bills. I'm gonna look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I'm still mm-hmm. going to do that. Mm-hmm. It damn sure ain't gonna be the Raiders. I can tell you that much. Mm-hmm. I ain't there yeah. yet. I, you, I <laughs> said what I said, and I didn't say, well, I'll be at the game tonight. That's why you see them charge the charge. You see them sitting there. Oh, that's they're, 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 why you're wearing you see this. them. I'm not gonna wear this tonight. I'm gonna wear oh, white for the football game. You see the, the charges giving me shout outs, right? You see the, the charges. Listen, listen, let me tell you something right now. The charges yeah. wanna put the world on notice that they a team in LA. When the Dallas Cowboys showed up once upon a time, when there have been no charges fan in. Now it's like a 60-40 split in so far. They say 60-40, yeah. you'll go with 70-30. Hey. Either way you slice it, it's an improvement compared to what it used to be. So they wanna make noise and wanna show the world. 
world that if we win football games, L.A. will support us. Excuse me. You got Cowboy fans, Steelers fans, Packers fans, all these other people before you even think about the Chargers or the Rams here in L.A. They trying to change that. We shall see. I'm in the house tonight, the Chargers. The Los Angeles Chargers. I'm coming to the fire. So far. I told somebody told me so far I was going to be so fly because they say the Cowboys going to be there. Ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen, okay? But I will tell you that the way Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills are looking uh, uh, right you. now, I would definitely give them an edge. So since their opening day snafu against the Steelers, they've been balling. Got two shutouts on the season thus far this year, even though that ain't saying much considering who they were going up against. And then, obviously, I got to look at the Kansas City Chiefs. I can't ignore that. That's where I'm at with it. 